Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog and this is episode 683 and we're going back to tell you that one last part of Venom issue 150 because obviously we covered Heart of Darkness which was the main story and that was in episode 681 but then a while back, we uh, actually not too long ago, we covered the other backup story in this which was about Flash Thompson and how he loses the symbiote and how it ends up on the homeless guy that then transferred it to Lee Price. So we've already covered those two stories in previous videos and I'll put links to both those episodes down below if you want to check those out. But this is the third and final story that was in Venom issue 150. And yes, I'm recording this on Venom Day, but it probably won't go up for another couple days. Hopefully this will go up though before the movie comes out. Um, and then we have more uh, stuff coming up from Mike Costa, who was the writer of the main series. But this little short story here, this flashback story, is actually written by David Michelini, who is the co-creator of Venom, along with Todd McFarlane, obviously. And we got Ron Lim doing the artwork. How cool is that? Classic Venom artist as well, because he drew half of Lethal Protector. Um, he came in and finished up after, I think, Bagley started the book, and Ron Lim came in and finished it up. So um, this story is called Mauled, M-A-L-L-E-D, like a going to a mall, and that's where it takes place, is actually in a mall. So this is very 80s. So I'm going to guess that this takes place probably even before Venom actually meets Spider-Man for the first time, or maybe soon after. I mean, it's got to be around that time period in the beginning, because it says it takes place a few years ago. There is Spider-Man toys here, so those exist. Uh, I'm guessing Spider-Man was popular at this point, you know, like to where they made toys of him. That could have been a something in the 80s as well. But hanging out in a mall is very 80s, or even early 90s and stuff. So I think this is just a nod back to that time period, and that's why it takes place in a mall. And that's why I think it's so great. <laughs> this is such a good story, actually, because it opens with Eddie. It kind of has that dark sense of humor where Eddie is, uh, as Venom, sitting in a room with crates everywhere. And he has this one crate open up and he's pulling off this Spider-Man doll. He's got it. He pulls it out of the box and he takes a Spider-Man head and pops it off and then throws the head one way and throws the body in another pile and then pulls up another toy and does it again. And he's like singing a little jingle to himself, like one little, two little, three little Spider-Man or whatever he's doing. He's kind of having like a little, like, you know, kind of having fun doing this. And then he, as he's leaving the room, you see that he's in the back of a toy store and there's like a, he ripped off the heads of all the Spider-Man dolls. I guess these were toys that were about to go out, you know, street date was like tomorrow or something. And he just came into this toy store, snuck in, went in the back, opened up the crate and tore all the heads off. I just, I just love that. I don't know why it's so weird and specific but kind of a weird sense of humor kind of thing. And I think David Michelini has always been, you know, really great at that with Venom. So I just love to have this story opened. And then as Venom goes out, he goes out into the toy store, just walks away. People are like, wait, who was that guy? Was he in the back? And he just keeps walking and he's talking to himself and he's talking to the symbiote. And then these guys show up to rob, I guess, like a jewelry store inside the mall or something. And uh, they have a gun and they're aiming at a security guard who tries to stop them. And then Venom shows up and just cleans house. You know, he just beats the crap out of them, cleans their clocks, throws them around, uses the webs, you know, uses the symbiote, I mean, spins them around. Uh, he even shoots the symbiote into the gun as one guy's about to fire at him, and it blows up. And I think it takes the guy's hand with it, too. And then there's one guy left. Venom goes over, takes him down, beats the crap out of him. And as he does, he looks around. He's like, is everyone safe? Are you guys okay? And everyone's like, what's going on? And then the security guy picks up his gun, aims it at Venom, and shoots him. And Venom looks down and goes, okay, that's puzzling. Like, that's a weird reaction. I just saved you. You're a security guard, and that guy was going to hurt you. He had a gun at you. I came in and saved you. Like, aren't, aren't you going to thank me? And he's looking around at all these, you know, men and women and children surrounding him. And he's like, no one's going to thank me? And they're like, stay back, you monster. And for some reason, the security guard freaks out, grabs this woman as, like, a hostage, and aims the gun at Venom. And he's like, what are you doing? Venom's like, you're, you're a security guard. You're supposed to protect these people why are you you know aiming a gun at me and holding her hostage he's like you he's like so basically in the guy's like shut up like you know i'm freaking out and he's like you know i don't know he's just, just rambling i guess and so venom just goes you know what you're not an innocent she is you're you're a i don't know what you are he's like but you shouldn't be wearing that suit you shouldn't be a security guard so venom uses the suit to go around the guy creep up behind him grab his face and suffocate him and Venom kills the security guard right in front of everyone. He's already killed the other three guys for the most part. And now he kills the security guard. And then this woman goes, oh, my God, you monster. And then, you know, Venom, thinking the woman's talking about the guy calling the security guard a monster because he just held her hostage and had a gun at Venom. He goes, yes, he is a monster and he'll never bother you again. <laughs> I just, I just, I don't know. I thought that was so fantastic because it's, again, his obliviousness. You know, he's like, yeah, I just saved you all. 
and he, he just not even paying attention to the fact that he looks like a giant monster and he's an alien from outer space. Um, but to him, he's like, I did the right thing. I stopped three bad guys. And then this, for whatever reason, the security guard saw me and freaked out. And, you know, then he put someone else's, you know, life in danger and I killed them too. Aren't you guys happy for me that I killed the bad guys? And it, no one sees it that way. So I kind of like that, just feeding off of that early days of Eddie where he was just very misunderstood by everybody and his intentions were always misunderstood, even by Spider-Man. So, uh, so I like this. So at the end, he's like, you know, um, I like having you suit. He's like, you know, we're not going to be a victim anymore together. You're not a victim and I'm not a victim. You know, we were when we were separate. We were victims to Spider-Man and to the city and, you know, to the people of this planet to an extent. But now together we are Venom. And so he swings off at the end as Venom. And the artwork is great. I love Ron Lim's style in this. And whoever inked over him and colored it did such a great job. They made it feel very 80s. You know, they made it feel very 80s. They put like um, kind of like pop art dots in some of the panels. It just really looked great. I thought this story was awesome. It's a very fun short story. And I wanted to make a whole separate episode just dedicated to it because I loved it that much. And I thought it was just like a fun Eddie Brock story. Because now that we're back to talking about Eddie Brock again as Venom with the Mike Costa run, you know, it's just, I was like, I got to make this separate episode. This is so much fun. And I just love the dark humor throughout it. I mean, this is the kind of thing I couldn't write anything near this because David McLean's a genius and I'm not. But these are the kind of Venom stories I would, like if someone was like, hey, do you have an eight page Venom story idea? It would be something like this where the humor is a little bit more along these lines. And it's more like this kind of Eddie where he's like feels misunderstood and stuff, but then still has confidence about what he's doing. Um, I kind of like that. So this story is just great. I thought it was awesome. And you can find it in the pages of Venom issue 150 or in this trade paperback that I have conveniently back here. Uh, this is The Land Before Crime. And issue 150 is the first book in this trade. And then afterwards, we have issues 151 to 153. And we're going to talk about that. That's where Venom is. Uh, I think he is saving the dinosaur people underground and stuff. There's a lot of cool, fun, weird stuff that happens in this. But also we find out what happens to the priest after issue 150, the Heart of Darkness story. They, they end on a cliffhanger with the priest being injured, seemingly by the symbiote suit. And Eddie going, why did you do this? This guy was an innocent. Um, so yeah, so that's going to get picked up when we get into this. So that'll be the next, you know, Mike Costa episode we get into, but we still have more Ravencroft to finish up. I think we have one issue left, so we're going to get that out to you next. And hopefully I'll get as many of these up before the movie comes out as possible. And then after the movie comes out, obviously I'm going to do a non-spoiler review for the movie. And then after that, I might dive more into comic books to buy us more time before we talk about spoilers so we can try to avoid them the best we can because obviously other people around the world who do watch this show, they haven't seen the movie yet. They won't get to see it until mid-October. Some people, not till November. So I won't be able to wait till November before we talk about spoilers, but I'll at least try to wait until the release of it in the UK uh, in October 15th. I'll at least try to wait till that weekend or after that weekend before we get into spoilers. So let me know what you think of this short story. I love it personally. I love everything about it. Art, story, dialogue, everything is great. The humor is amazing. I love it. It, land, it sticks every landing and it's one of my favorite little short stories of Eddie Brock out there. Uh, but let me know what you think. If you love this story as much as I do, let me know down below. Or if you don't and you like another short story out there that you like more than this, let me know what that is down below and we'll talk about it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.